All right, welcome everyone to the weekly stash, home where we talk about everything about comics and the comic book world in general. And happy Star Wars Day to everyone. To uh, for those of you who've been watching Star Wars all day, like myself, uh, I am joined by always Edgar Joseph Gagel. Happy Star Wars yeah. Day, guys. So we're gonna try a new format since we spend like half an hour just completely BSing before the show, we figured we'd just toss it into the show and see how everyone likes it. So we haven't even discussed topics or anything like that outside of a, a brief email where we just shot some ideas around. So we're just going to kind of wing it today and see how it goes. So I don't have a lot outside of the fact that I've been watching Star Wars all day, getting caught up on reading Guardians of the Galaxy, which is what I've been doing, reading Guardians, watching Star Wars. So it's been... It's been a nice little, nice little Sunday. Sounds great. So I know, know you've been busy yet. You had some oh, trouble. I've been a little bit everywhere. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know the the big stuff going on this past week. There's some stuff that, of course, Batman Eternal is really going good. I want to hit the the Flash annual because it was the first live performance of Wally West, and there are Wally fans all over the internet going nuts right now. So we'll we'll catch that plus some of the free comic book day stuff and of course the list for coming up this coming week. And there's a lot coming up this week. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've had quite the eventful weekend uh, with my viewing of the Amazing Spider-Man two and my extensive uh, free comic book day adventures of yesterday. Yeah, we were just talking about that. You actually liked the movie, unlike yeah. everyone else on the internet. Yeah, you know I'm I'm not I'm not going to be a slave uh, to the. Uh, Continuity. I, I, I actually I feel like I'm one of the few people who enjoyed the first film uh, and some of the things, the departures, if you will. I'm I'm usually open to uh, to some change. You know, kind of like I told you earlier. You know, as long as it grabs my attention, I don't get bored and it's entertaining. I mean, I can't really say it sucks. I mean, know, they, I mean, that's they, cool. The thing for me is is I love the characters. I love who they cast for the characters. Like they are awesome. Andrew uh, Garfield is awesome as Spider Man. Emma Stone is phenomenal in the movie. I agree. I agree. They're both awesome characters and have the best cast. Yet it doesn't seem the writing or the directing holds up at all to the movie. Like the first one, I thought that that Andrew and Emma carried the first movie, and everything I read about the second movie said similar things that it was good, and the fact that they're awesome in it again, but the writing was even worse in the first one. So that's why I didn't spend my money this weekend to go see it as much as I was hoping to. I was like, well, I can go see that this weekend, or I can go see Neighbors next weekend. I'm going to save my money and go see Neighbors next weekend. Well, I mean, I can, you know, the story wasn't, you know, it wasn't thought, I guess, I guess thought-provoking or too deep. I mean, it wasn't, to me, it was, the, you know, the good old action popcorn flick. It was kind of fast-paced. I, I heard some people were upset that the, it felt like they always had to be doing something and they always had to be driving and, and, and there wasn't enough uh, slow moments. But I, for that kind of film, it didn't really bother me because it was, they did have a lot to go over in a sense, but I didn't feel too rushed. I told you earlier that uh, I felt like characters like Rhino, for example, didn't feel like it crowded the film because they didn't. He wasn't in the entire film, so they didn't have to create a a storyline. You know, that they would have to cut away to go to go follow up on. It was just like he's here. That's him. Okay, next. You know, kind of thing. And and I thought they did really well with the balance. And they did have a lot of little characters within the Spider-Man universe, kind of hidden in there, but they were just small little moments that didn't really bog any of the story down. It was like, okay, there's him, there's him. Now we move on. So I, I felt that that kind of moved well in that sense. That's cool. I will definitely rent it, and I will definitely watch it. And I set things up pretty well for them, for whatever they've got coming in the future. I don't know. In all reality, I, I'm, I wish Sony would... Not have but, control of the movie. You know, how, how much longer does Sony have control of it? Uh, uh, well, they have the rights until they stop making movies. I think they well, have. They have a, I, a while. 
from what I've read, and I've read a lot about it, is they're going deep. Both Sony and, and Fox are starting to see how successful things have been for Marvel. And both of those studios are getting really, starting to really, I think, uh, throw the fingers out and fan out their universes. Because as we all know, uh, uh, Fox is making a Fantastic Four reboot. There's already rumors of them crossing over with the X-Men universe. There's, always, there's rumors of the X-Men universe expanding to possible X-Force, X-Factor films. Because everyone knows that Hugh Jackman may only have one more movie left in him. And after that they're going to have to recast or kill him off and he won't be a central character anymore so they'll have to do stuff there. Uh, Sony has already or no, yes, uh, Sony's already talked about doing a Sinister Six film, a Venom film, and they're talking about really getting into the meat and potatoes of the Spider-Man world. Andrew Garfield is already talking about his exit and a possible entry of another Spider-Man, which if they follow the Ultimate Comics would be a really good way to introduce Miles Morales, which is the the Black Spider-Man, which I would think would be really cool because that would be a... I thought that was a really great transition in the comics, and I think that would make for a great uh, film adaptation myself. That actually would. Of course, over at Fox, I mean, they, they, there's only enough X characters to last to, like, I don't know, 3,015? <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. And as long as they make money and, and make them, I, I don't... I don't see them ever giving it back to Fox, I, or I mean to, to Marvel and Disney. I would, I would actually go on record and say I would, I would bet that Sony and Fox would team up before they gave their rights away, unless yeah. they just, um, yeah, unless they're probably not, because I mean they Marvel basically sold sold off the rights before they ever had the studios, before they ever had Marvel Studios to, did they sell it to uh, Universal, Sony? When I'm looking this up right now. Well, and even on Sony owns Spider-Man. Fox owns X-Men, Daredevil, and the Fantastic Four. No, no, Dare Marvel no, no, Studios no, no. and Disney own everything else. Dis Disney has Daredevil because they're doing the Netflix series. Okay, so they may have bought off Daredevil back from Fox. Well, it it, it reverted more than it bought. I don't I don't okay. know how that goes. Revert. Yeah, there's some. I I was trying to see if I could find the loophole, but there's some loophole to where. If if X amount of years pass without them utilizing the character, uh, then the rights revert back to yes. Marvel. So as long as Sony basically keeps putting out Spider-Man movies, then it's probably like a three to five year range. They keep the rights, which to me sucks because. Oh yeah, I Sony would ever since Spider-Man three hasn't done a very good job with Spider-Man. Outside of, they got the casting down, but... And you know, I feel... I feel they're going to end up getting... They're, they're going to end up going away, and or Marvel's going to shell out the money to buy Spider-Man back. I don't think that'll... I don't know if they'll be able to do that, but I bet they want to after this movie. I'm willing to bet they do too, because I feel like they took a step in the right direction, because the possibilities really are seemingly endless, especially since they've already said, we're going to do a Sinister Six movie. We're going to do a Spider-Man 3 movie. We don't know if they're going to be the same or not. They've just kind of said, we're going to do that, and we're going to do Venom, which is going to probably upset a lot of people, too, because the rumors are that it's going to be like everything else, and it's going to center around Oscorp creating these villains, and it's not going to be the traditional Venom uh, origin story, which... I'm not going to complain about it because as long as it's entertaining and good, I'm okay with a little bit of change. I've already seen, I've already read the stories and seen them. You know, if they if they make them like they are in the books, great. If not, and they're good, great. I win either way, me at least. That's that's where you get into a lot of fans feel like they own a character. You know, you, you grow yeah. up, with it, you love the character. It's a part of your life, and when they make changes, it's really tough for a lot of fans to grab. Uh, some of the changes. You don't understand the reason they're doing it. Some of it, they do it for specific reasons to grab an audience, and some of the changes work and some don't. But the bottom line is we don't own the characters, and that's really hard to deal with sometimes. Uh, you know, We're catching that over in The Flash with Wally West. and we'll, we'll come back to Wally in a minute, but it's the same thing here. Folks really don't want to give up what they understand is the origin story of a hero or a villain. 
Uh, and maybe that's a good segue to talk about Wally West and really the changes that they're doing that's got all the Flash fans up in arms. Well, you know, the now, Wally West started out back in the Silver Age. He was uh, the, the nephew of Iris West, uh, a big fan of the Flash, and Barry Allen recreates the same accident that gave him super speed. Wally gets super speed, and at first wears a copy of the Flash's uniform, later gets his own uniform, is a founding member of the Teen Titans, and then after the crisis on Infinite Earth, when Barry Allen dies heroically, he takes over the mantle of the Flash. And over the years, his character grows. At first... He's immature, he wins the lottery, he blows all of his money, but eventually he grows up, he marries Linda Park, they have a couple of kids, and for an entire generation of people from the 80s and 90s and beyond, Wally West is the Flash, the red-haired, green-eyed, really nice character that was so well-developed. The New 52 hits, and there's a whole generation of heroes that disappeared. Uh, Donna Troy... Uh, Stephanie Brown, a whole bunch of others, including Wally West, and the Wally fans were very upset. It wasn't just that Barry Allen had come back. It was that they felt disrespected that this character they loved was gone. Now when they're bringing him back, they don't really bring back the Wally West that these guys knew. They're bringing him back young. That's one thing. But they're bringing him back biracial, which some of the fans are very upset about that they're not bringing back the Wally that's red-haired and green-eyed that they remember. And he's not a fan of the Flash. This is his first appearance in the Flash Annual where he's alive. And he's not a fan of the Flash for several reasons. But that makes sense. He, uh, his father had run off. His mother disappeared when the crime syndicate hit town. And Barry was nowhere to be found. Of course, he was trapped with the other Justice Leaguers and unable to help anybody. But all of Central City is wondering, where were you when we needed you? You add to that that he idolized his uncle Daniel, who in this continuity was reverse Flash, and Barry Allen Flash brings him into prison. So Daniel just takes the Flash, and the first time you see him in this book, he's tagging a building with a symbol of the Flash with a circle and a slash through it, and he's got a little bit of attitude, not a huge amount, but he only appears in two or three pages. We really don't know what his personality is fully going to be, but... In comments over at places like speedforce.org, uh, which is a major flan, fan, uh, Flash fan site, it's really divided up. There's some fans who are saying, let's wait and see what comes up, and there's fans who are angry. I mean really angry. Never read DC again. Hate them. Uh, <laughs> feel completely disrespected. And, and I get their feelings to a certain extent, except for this. And it sort of goes back to the other point. We do feel like we own the characters. This is a generation that grew up with the Flash, and they're feeling disrespected because they grew up with him. One guy put in the comments, I got married about the time he got married. I had kids about the time he had kids. And what he's not realizing is his generation is doing what my generation did 20 years ago, and that's largely leave comics. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of guys my age that read comics anymore. There's uh, They're hitting an older demographic that they need to get away from. The, the typical demographic of comics these days are white 35 to 40 year old males and if you stick with that demographic comics will die out in the next few years and I don't want that to happen so they're trying to reach new demographics and they're taking significant risks in doing so some of the risks are good and some of them are not so hot and this one hasn't had a chance to play out I, I want to give the new writers a chance to, to play out and see what comes out of it I get the frustration of Wally fans I'm a Wally fan but I want to see where this plays out. It's just that this is a very controversial choice, and it con will continue to be until such time as it either draws in enough few fans that you've got a new generation of this Wally fans, or until it doesn't work and they do something else. They they've retconned and given up before in the in the 80s. They retconned Supergirl out of existence, and then they brought back some artificial life form from a pocket universe that went over a little bit, was popular for some folks, but they kept missing the original Supergirl and eventually they killed off the artificial life form and brought Supergirl from Krypton back. Uh, either Wally's going to turn out great and everybody will love him or they'll kill him off and have Wally from Earth 217 come in and be the original Wally again. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Well, okay. and you know, I, I totally know what you mean because, you know, it was about a year or so, about a year and a half back when they did the same thing with Spider-Man by introducing the Superior Spider-Man, 
with that brave, you know, taking the chance of we're going to get rid of this character that, like you said, so many people feel like they owned and, and had a, a say-so, and then they came out and said, he's gone, all right, he's done, and we're going to do this. And, of course, they had to, you know, they, uh, they down the road, they had their plans of bringing Peter Parker back like they did this past Wednesday for Amazing Spider-Man number one. But they had to tell a lot of people, you know, no, he's gone. He's never coming back, and this is what we're doing now. And, and, and like you, you said with yours, there were some that really embraced it, like myself. I really liked it. I, I hated that it ended as soon as it did. But there, are, there were a lot that felt entitled and felt like, how can you do this? How can you take Peter Parker away? You're spitting on everything he's done for the past, you know, I don't know how many years since they, you know, the 40s or the 50s. or You know, they, you've been, you know, desecrated this character. But I think you have to... In order to reach that audience, you have to take those risks and tell that story that hasn't been told yet, maybe, to really get people to come in and jump back onto the boat. Well, if you want to take off Spidey fans, you only have to say three words. One more day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, to take this down like a real big rat hole, just because it's a, it's a good, interesting topic, but does this really hone back to the fact that we've, had these characters alive so long that we struggled to get these new storylines. So, we, I mean, some of the stuff makes sense. You can change universes for stuff that's happening in space, but for these other characters, like like the Flash and stuff, this really harken back to the fact that we aren't creating new characters in the comic book universe. You know, it's it's where in, over the years you can write yourself into corners. And, and that's a reason that every once in a while there does need to be a major house cleaning. When, when I was a kid in Ray Comics, everything was a one-shot until Marvel came along. And even for many years, DC stayed with one shot. So, you know, you would have a battle, but you really didn't identify that years had progressed. And that started happening in the late 60s when they had Dick Grayson grow up and go to college. That was in 1969, about the time the TV show ended. And I remember being very angry as a kid. I was, I was 12 years old. And how dare they have Dick Grayson grow up and go off to college. He's supposed to be there with Batman. It's Batman and Robin, not Batman by himself in an apartment in downtown Gotham City and Robin off to college. <laughs> and the Teen Titans growing up and becoming pacifists. <laughs> and I, and I, I was mad. But yeah. if, they, if they had not done that, you would have never had Nightwing, who's a fan yeah. favorite. And, of course, now they're getting ready to have him abandon the Nightwing uh, identity, and there's going to be a whole series called Grayson, where the world thinks he's dead, and he's still operating on his own. Nice. So, so that's coming up later this year, but, you know, the crisis on Infinite Earth was needed to do some house cleaning, and it didn't do a great job, but they eventually made some continuity work. Uh, Flashpoint, for all of its flaws, I thought the series itself was wonderful. The ending was sort of convoluted to create the New 52, but the series was great. But they needed to restart if they're going to get a new generation of fans. And there's changes that I don't like and others don't like. But if it brings in enough new fans to replace the fans who were already leaving, then comic books can last a little bit longer. I, I wonder some of the sanity, like now we've got, uh, I, have, I did not manage to grab Future's End for free comic book day, but I've, I've read enough of the reviews on there. It sounds like it was one more thing where, it's a post-apocalyptic future, and someone's arm gets cut off, and uh, all the heroes are turning evil, and, you know, okay, how many times are you going to do that? But if it works, and they bring in more fans, and someday when I have grandkids, I can get them interested in comics, wonderful, because I do want the medium to, to, to live. All that being said, fans feel like they own the characters, and the reason we do is because we've identified with them for so long. Uh, but all this being said, and, and I don't know how Wally's going to turn out. I, I hope it turns out well because it's such a, a risky choice. You you hope it turns out well for the writer's sake. Uh, but I, I do admire the fact that they're trying to reach a more diverse audience. We've got a whole nation made of a whole lot of different people other than straight white guys and I think we need to be representing everybody. We've got fans of all straight. You go to a Comic Con and you find fans of, of every race, every nationality, every sexual orientation, every gender identification, you name it, and they're looking for characters to identify with. And, and I think it's long past time comics delivered on it, 
it's just tough to make that work when you've got a universe filled with straight black guys that have existed for 75 years. So they're trying to make it work. Don't know if this experiment's going to work or not, uh, but it's going to be interesting to watch. So Stephen, I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up because in uh, over in Marvel and in, in especially the X Men world, uh, we've talked about this before. Wolverine is on his way out. Um, a, a staple character, you know, that's been in Marvel, a very popular character. He's on his way out now. In his one of his series, uh, Wolverine and the X Men, they've been grooming possibly the maybe next generation of X Men. They've introduced characters like Quentin Quire, who is to carry on as the future of the Phoenix Force and and uh, Evan who is supposedly the next apocalypse so they've they, they've explored a lot of those things and like with Wolverine dying and uh, the X-Men kinda like others you know not really aging but kinda progressing are they going to ever make that turn they're, they're kind of showing us maybe they will one day make that turn where the X-Men aren't these Cyclops Storm you know Wolverine and it's these new characters that they're actually, they're actually gonna you know carry on to the next generation and some of them I actually really like I like Quentin Quire and the possibilities and I would I really hope that when I'm older that I get to look back and say you know I'm still not reading you know these old the, the stories of the same characters I'd like to be saying yeah, I'm reading these characters of you know the next generation and I'm enjoying them so I kind of hope we, they we make touched on that in the pre-show a little bit Joe when we were talking about you know them bringing how they're bringing venom in to uh, guardians. Yeah, that was uh, that was part of a free comic book day as well. The uh, the guardians of the galaxy book uh, kind of went back and told how venom gets brought into the guardians via Tony Stark. He he thinks he feels like there should be some representation of of uh, of the Avengers with them out in space. Out now that you know since last year's Infinity. The universe is such such more larger than now, so they 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 feel like they you know you he's a venom was at a point in his uh I guess storyline where he could go anywhere, and they said, well, your suits from space, and I kind of hope that's where they're going with this is they're going to put him with the guardians and maybe have some sim planet symbiote story, which I would be really excited for myself. Yeah, and then they have, and then in Guardians they have you know Cyclops is. He left the X Men and just decided to. He's with I'm the Star. My dad. <laughs> He's with the Star Jammers now. So they're, they're really the the cosmic universe is getting big. They've got the New Warriors, which is a new Nova and a new group of superheroes, young superheroes that could I've enjoyed, but I can't speak for everyone that, that could blossom into a, a really a really fun and and a neat team for the future. So they've got they've got a lot of those young character elements. I just hope that they're able to uh, they just rebooted uh, uh, Ghost Rider and that, I've really enjoyed that, the, the new Ghost Rider so they've, they've done a lot of they're taking a lot of chances and I, and I hope they really pan out and don't end up fizzling out because too many people say that's not the character I grew up with you know well we kind of started the segue into it so let's, let's talk about oh, yeah, do you have something? No, I'm just saying, oh no he's driving a car now <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's different. It's different. Right. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> so we kind of started talking about, you know, the crossover of what they used for Guardians with Comic Book Day. Uh, what else did you guys find? And that was probably the most interesting thing I, I saw with, with Comic Book Day that I, that I enjoyed the most. Um, there's some re-releases of number one issues and, you know, the usual stuff. I, I grabbed. Red, I got number one Red Sonia, which was cool to have a physical copy of. That's a great story. It really is. Uh, I, I got a couple of them that were really interesting. Uh, Action Lab. You know, we've got a we're real big on Action Lab. Uh, there, uh, they had two books out. One was from their Danger Zone that had a new zombie trap. Yeah, but, I picked. That was one of the other ones I picked up too. I got that. I got <laughs> no, that. And, and actually. I really like the new zombie tramp. The way they're doing that, uh, they're leading into some new stories. And as good as the original volume was, this looks like it's going to be even better. Uh, and, uh, and they also had with that uh, uh, getting ready for another chapter of M Theory, which is one of the strangest, wildest rides I've ever been on. And it was actually the first indie book I ever reviewed. So I've got a special place in my heart for that. Their, their kids' books, another issue of Skyward, which, if you like anything all ages, the 
Jeremy Dale is, is a great writer. His, as an artist, it's almost Disney-esque. It's some of the best comic book art you will ever find. And it was teamed up with a new character called Midnight Tiger uh, that's just starting off that looks really good. So I like those books. I love the Valiant books. There's one that gets you ready for Armor Hunters, which is really going to be a huge event. And, uh, and then their other one was sort of a guidebook to the Valiant universe. If you want to get into Valiant, which is it's the most cohesive universe that's out there, uh, they don't do a lot of titles, but the titles they do are consistently good quality stories. I mean just amazing stories. And they've got a guidebook that goes through all of their characters. You want to get to know these guys, there's two pages on just about everybody. Uh, so their books were really good. And that's leading into, uh, when we get to next week's books, i got something about Archer and Armstrong I'll tell you in just a little bit. Uh, Image had Rise of the Magi, uh, which looks really good. A uh, magic-based book where someone stole a, some very powerful magic and trying to, that we don't know what they're going to do with it, but it's not going to be good. And the introductory book on this one, unlike a lot of other free comic book day books, which will give you like two or three pages of several different stories, this one had the full deal going, and it really looks good. So those, those were the big ones that I was able to grab from Free Comic Book Day. There was also a Power Rangers Free Comic Book Day book. I got uh, that. that was class, if you're a classic Power Rangers fan, that was pretty awesome. So uh, uh, there was some really good Atomic Robo had a book out, and if you've never read Atomic Robo, it's pretty cool stuff too. But that, that's the ones that I caught. And that's surprising because I wasn't able to actually go to the store, but I had, I had a workshop I was attending, but my son – Saved me and got there, and then thankfully we got a few uh, uh, review copies sent to us. So I managed to still get to participate on my own here. Joe, what about you? Did you grab uh, anything interesting? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible. But I did have a full day as uh, in the greater area that I live in. I was able to go to about five different stores. Oh wow! The first uh, first store I went to was probably had the best store uh, or the best deals. Um, they had a special going. Uh, every comic eleven ninety nine and below was a dollar. Everything twelve and up was half off. Variants were half off. They had other deals with figures and collectibles and stuff. But and they also had the deal going if you uh, spent eight dollars or more in back issues, you got to grab as many free comic books as you wanted to for the free comic book day. So I got a lot of mine there. Uh, my total grand total for the day was around thirty something of the free comic books. As every wow. store, every store kind of had a little bit different. You know, some of them had some of the same stuff, but some had some things that the other ones didn't have. Most other stores did uh, a limit of five, uh, so that it, the, so they could ensure that everyone got a little bit of everything. Uh, another store had forty percent off all back issues. I ended up with around the neighborhood of eighty comic books for the whole day, probably roughly. I bought a lot of cheap stuff, but that's because there were a lot of sales going on. But every store that I went to had a lot of good stuff going on, a lot of uh, people involved. Uh, the people running the stores couldn't be happier with the uh, participation and people coming out, some in cosplay, some not. Uh, overall, great attitudes. My only my only gripe was that somebody knocked my side, uh, side rear view mirror off my car when I parked it to go to one of the shops. <laughs> oh, man. That makes that day a little bit more expensive. That's Derby for you, I guess. Uh. Well, that's right. Derby Day is the same yeah. time up there. Yeah. Were you able to get Project Black Sky from Dark Horse? I did. That was one of the, the one of the ones I did get. Oh, that's cool. I was I, I missed that when I was really hoping to get it. I got a lot of the the, the good stuff like like I like I said earlier. The Marvel had the Guardians of the Galaxy, which had the the Venom Origin had an intro for a new Thanos story coming out in August, and it also had a, a touch on the uh, intro to the Spider Verse, which is like in November, I think. So, and the Rocket Raccoon book I haven't got to read. I just got to thumb through, and it looks fun. It's got a couple different stories in there, and I got the DC one. It looked good, and so did the uh, the two Valiant ones you mentioned. They looked well, uh, pretty good as well. Valiant's turning into one of my favorite comics universes. It really it just I, I don't really read bad Valiant stories. I, I, they're always good stuff. Awesome. Well, was there anything else that you read this week that you want to talk about? Uh, that was all that interesting? I've, I've, covered got, all? I've got something sort of an interesting 
counterpoint here. Uh, Batman Eternal featured Batgirl in it. And it was a great story. Uh, I love Batman Eternal. If you haven't been grabbing it, it's a weekly story that's well worth reading. Uh, they've got Jim Gordon arrested and on trial for murder, a crooked cop in charge of the police department, uh, Carmine Falcone, who was behind uh, Dick Grace's parents' murder, uh, really in, in town. Uh, you've got a lot of stuff going on. But the, the Batgirl that was written in that book is different than the Batgirl that appears in the Batgirl annual that Gail Simone writes. And you get a chance to see the difference. Scott Snyder's a great writer. Uh, John Lehman was part on the writing on it, another great writer. But they wrote Batgirl more as driven by anger and frustration because her dad's in jail. So it was more you know, Batgirl smash kind of stuff. She even took a couple of punches at Batman himself because he was in her way. Uh, and it was a great story. But then you get the other side of it, and when you see the Batgirl annual, she's, she's teaming up with Poison Ivy. And there's still a lot of action, there's still a lot of fighting, but you get in Batgirl's head a little bit more. And you, you get to see some of her thought processes, her deductive abilities, even some of her, even some of her doubts that she overcomes in the story. And it's a, it's a different take on the character. Both are great takes, both are valid takes, and both are awesome stories, but if you want to catch two different sides of her character, grab Batman Eternal and grab the Bat, Batgirl Annual, and, and I think you won't be sorry you grabbed them both. It was really neat to see the counterpoint of how the character was treated in both issues. Yeah, there's only a few issues in the Batman Eternal, I think, like uh, four oh, yeah. issues of show. Yeah, it's just that was just the fourth issue that uh, came out this past week. I'm going to briefly cool. just touch on two. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep on going with Spider-Man. Uh, it's a big week for him. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number one came out. It was a pretty good issue. Uh, kind of, uh, I guess, uh, the, a building block slash fallout issue. You know, he's getting used to being. To, to inheriting the life that Otto Octavius left him. You know, he's a doctor now. He's uh, He has his own company. He has relationships and problems with other people that the Oct that Octavius created. So he's kind of uh, edging into that. They also introduced in the very beginning the the idea that the spider bit somebody else. Uh, the, you know, it was just a one-page thing. Like, what if we told you that this happened? So that's kind of slowly being introduced and that will be introduced more in original sin another one that was that's been really good that I just got into was the new uh, the new silver surfer as they introduce him into a story where he has to save the greatest uh, palace in the universe and if he doesn't then the most important person in his life will die but it's somebody he doesn't even know but it's interesting because You've got him, the Silver Surfer. He's been someone who's been everywhere. He's seen everything. And the, the woman that's been chosen is someone who's lived in a small town her whole life and never left and never been anywhere else. So it's got those two different dynamics. And it's also written by Spider-Man's Dan Slott, and uh, he's done exceptionally well. And I think it's a, it's a good series that's getting off the ground, and I think anyone interested in the Silver Surfer would, be, uh, be, do, would do well to pick this up as well. Awesome. What are we looking forward to next week, gentlemen, as far as comic book-wise? You want to go first on that one, Joe? I'll go ahead. Okay. I've got a, lot of, I've got a long list. Uh, in, in DC, Batman Eternal 5 comes out. Batman Superman number 10 has Ray Palmer in. Now, I grew up with Ray Palmer as the Atom, and apparently he will be shrinking in this issue. I'm looking forward to that big time. The second issue of Manipul and Bucciolato on Detective comes out. Uh, Earth 2, number 23, comes out. And the last issue of the movement, which, as you guys know, I have thoroughly, completely enjoyed, uh, it comes out this week. There's some talk that some of the characters from this book will show up in other titles, and I certainly hope so, because this has been just a wonderful little private corner of the DC Universe that I'm, I'm sorry to see closed. Over at Image, Aphrodite 9 comes out, Clone comes out, and a new series called Nailbiter. If you ever wondered where all the serial killers come from, this book goes into that. Uh, there's supposedly some town that's produced 16 or more serial killers, and so it ought to be pretty interesting. Dynamite has Turok number 4, which has been completely awesome. Uh, Red Sonja number 9 comes out. Uh, the Black Bat, now that's an old pulp character from the 40s that came out about the same time as Batman, 
Brian Bucciolato revived him a few issues ago for Dynamite, and so now he's writing two Bat characters, uh, one for DC and one for Dynamite. But Black Bat, he's more of more of a of a noir version of Daredevil in some respects than he is Batman. It's a great story, uh, and, and I really do like the Black Bat. They've also got one called Chaos, and apparently there's the Chaos Universe is like 20 years old. It's been published in different publishers. Uh, it's coming to Dynamite uh, and an issue number one this week. Archer and Armstrong at Valiant. Now, Archer and Armstrong is one of the. It, it's a book that perfectly combines funny stuff and great action, and it's a it's a perfect balance. If you haven't read Archer and Armstrong, it's one of the most hilarious books I've ever read, and it's great for action. They've confirmed a whole lot of conspiracy theories over year over the years. In fact. They're, they had a, a storyline where they sort of confirmed a conspiracy theory that tied the entire Valiant universe together. And now it's it's a conspiracy theorist's highest dream. They throw the book in this issue. I've got an advanced look at this thing. And you read it and go, yes, the world finally makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I won't tell you what all he throws in it, but I mean they throw the kitchen sink into this book, and I can't wait for how this new storyline plays out. So it's Archer and Armstrong number 20. Don't miss it. IDW's got Rocky and Bullwinkle 3 out, which has – it's a classic humor. Mark Evanier's running this thing, and it's great. Boom has Suicide Risk number 13 and Dead Letters number 2. And over at Dark Horse, Greg Rucka, who is a fantastic writer, has Veil number 3 coming out. And that is an awesome book. He also does Lazarus and does a lot of stuff for DC. Uh, Lazarus for Image, but Bale for Dark Horse. And, you know, if you really like his kind of writing, don't miss Bale. It's, it's, an, it's a great book. So, obviously, I got a lot to read this week, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, you're, you're, going, to be, you're going to be a busy man this week. That's oh, for sure. <laughs> Joe, what do we have coming up this week? Well, this week, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, after leaving Earth, we have a new Cyclops number one that will follow the uh, original X-Men in the space with his father and those adventures. We've got a Thanos annual number one coming. Uh, new Warriors, which I mentioned earlier, as a new issue. Original Sin number one will start this week with the main uh, the main storyline. The Punisher, which has been a pretty good series, uh, as he's in a new city dealing with new problems. Um, uh, Miles Morales, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Uh, I've recently got into the, into that uh, sector of the Spider-Man world, and I've thought it's been pretty good. So it should be a good uh, jumping-on point for anyone interested in, in checking that out. New Moon Knight comes out. Deadpool vs. Carnage. Magneto. And uh, a, a New Amazing Spider-Man 1.1, which is going to be a short uh, story or a short uh, run point series called Learning to Crawl, which will explore his earlier, like, first 60 days as being a superhero. Cool. Sounds good. Well, i got to compliment you on your camo arrow costume there. Oh, yeah, well, it's it's, it's that, and it, and it goes in Star Wars days, my, my Sith hood, kind of, so. Okay, yeah. Like <laughs> my homage. <laughs> my I had my Cardinal Star Wars shirt on today, but I, I was doing yard work, and it got hot. And I had to shower, so I, I had to had to switch it up. You can't, I, was sport, I was sporting a Star Wars shirt all day. Well, you can't see it, but I do have a Boba Fett shirt on. So. Oh, there you go. Nice. Uh, well, to wrap things up a little bit, just coming up this week again, we have the second to last episode of Arrow this week. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is... I'm not sure how many more episodes they have. They only have a couple left, too. I believe so. Uh, they're in that two to three left range. Both series doing well. Arrow, Arrow's kicking off to be really, really, really badass. They're they're uh, they're, they're, and, they're both ra this. they're both ramping up pretty well for the finales, and I I couldn't be more pleased. Also, on a side note, tomorrow is uh, also Jack Bauer Day. Is uh, twenty four gets started for those uh, interested tomorrow night on Fox. Yeah, I'm sure there will be a two hour two hour long season premiere, so so that should be uh that should be awesome. I'm sure that will blow ratings through the roof. So 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 we're gonna do a, a summer movie draft. I just loaded all the picks into our spreadsheet. We only had one person that picked Spider Man. 
I think domestic it is uh, approaching 100 million. I'll have to look that up. But we will provide updates to what's going on with that, with the podcast as time goes on. And uh, we'll talk about our picks here a little bit more next week. As we get all our picks together, I'm still waiting for uh, John to get his picks. He was confused. So our movie writer, John <laughs> Fruscio, he sent me his, his picks. I guess he, he decided to assign his own dollar amount total to the movies. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. Oh. And it was like, yeah, I'll take X-Men. Uh, Just like the Yankees. How to Train Your Dragon, Transformers. <laughs> It's like, no, 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 you can't have Transformers and How to Train Your Dragon and not be out of money. Because <laughs> I think they're both like 40 or $45 movies. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon is $40, Transformers is $45. And then you need a $5. Is, so, there, is there a $5 movie? You know, there was, I think there was a $6 movie because I had $6 left on something. I just grabbed something that was that. Yeah, I, I think that was uh, Fault of Our Stars. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what the hell that's about I either. I have no idea, but... I had the money left, so I went for it. Oh, and Stephen, uh, Spider-Man did have another uh, Guardians trailer, which is the same thing, but it was still in 3D, so that was still fun to see again. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. It's probably the same one that was exclusive to the uh, Apple Trailers app that I watched the other night. They had some exclusive trailer on the Apple Trailers app. It's probably the same trailer, just not in 3D. Plus, for those who go to the theater, uh, wait, wait a few minutes into the credits to see a scene from the new X-Men film. Cool. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Next week, Neighbors, big comedy. Nothing to do with comic book related, but it looks like it's going to be the comedy of the summer slash maybe even the year. So we'll see. That'll be huge. All right, well, that pretty much uh, does it for this week's Weekly Stash. As it runs a little long with our different format this week, let us know what you think in the comments. But uh, thanks, guys, and uh, keep reading the stash. Have a good night. May the fourth be with you. That's right.